Hello, and welcome to Virtual Investor Conferences. My name is John Viglotti, and on behalf of OTC Markets, we very pleased you joined us for our Life Sciences Investor Forum. And we'll start the day off with a live presentation from Arexo, who is developing solutions for mental health and substance use disorders. Please note you can submit questions in the box to the left of the slides. You can also view a company's availability for one-on-one -on -one meetings through the scheduled meetings tab found on the conference platform. At this point, I'm very pleased to welcome Nikolai Sorensen. He's the president and chief executive officer of Arexo, which trades on the OTCQX best market under the symbol O-R-X-O-Y and on NASDAQ Stockholm under the symbol O-R-X. Welcome back, Nikolai. Thank you very much. It's a pleasure to be here again, and I look forward to present Orexo, uh, which is a commercial states company. And just as you said, John, we are focusing on the opioid use disorder market in particular, uh, being one of the few companies who are developing new medications, new solutions, and also have a product in the market to help this tragedy that is hitting the US at the moment. Uh, I will move to the next few slides. So Orexo, as I said, is a commercial state pharmaceutical company where we have a quite exciting technology based on our new world-leading nasal delivery technology. I'll come back to that later. Uh, our group revenues, is this is in Swedish krona, but right now it's quite easy in US dollars. You just have to divide it by 10. So our group revenues is about $62 million and our US pharma, that's our pharmaceutical operations, is about $30 million in, in uh, EBIT contribution. In Sweden, we're then taking these EBIT contributions and invest them into new solutions that we're then developing in tight collaboration with our experts in the US and then in the end testing it for patients in the US before launching them. I'll come back to my pipeline a little later. Looking a little historically, Orexo is, as a fundamental, the company is built on developing new leading drug delivery technologies, so smarter ways of delivering uh, the active substance and drugs. We have developed uh, four products based on our sublingual platform, which is a sublingual tablet that is very fast dissolving and with very high bioavailability that you place under the tongue. These four products have, have sold for more than a billion dollars in, in global sales. Orex is responsible uh, for the bigger one of them, uh, Subsol, I'll come back to that. And our new venture is into a nasal delivery technology we call Amorphowex. It's based on an amorphous powder. So instead of a, a liquid nasal uh, delivery system, this is based on a powder developing uh, system. And today we have three products in development, OX124, which is a naloxone product, OX125, nalmefine product, OX640, which is an epinephrine product. And in addition to this, we have multiple other you can say pre-projects where we have patents and patent uh, applications covering a broad range of molecules. And I will also come back to that later. Our commercial operations have been in, in operations in the US since 2013. And we have our head office in Morristown, New Jersey. We have sales uh, representatives basically in all large metropolitan areas of the US. They are primarily selling Subsol, which has been a a very strong value contributor to Orexo with nearly 5 billion in, in sales since the launch. Uh, that's about 500 million US. Uh, and we also now have in quite short order, we have some very synergistic products that we're going to launch. We have a high dose naloxone powder formulation, nasal delivery, OX124, which we're expecting to file with the FDA uh, a little later this year in Q3. We also have a very fast acting nalmefine product called OX125 uh, that we will, which building on a lot of the same technology platform as we have in OX124. So when that is submitted for the FDA, we will uh, move forward with OX125. And then we're working with complementary solutions, in particular within digital health, where we have a project called Modia, which is, you can say, a digital therapy type. It's a cognitive behavioral therapy digitized that you can complement to your treatment with medication. We know today that the majority of the patients in the US don't have access to any counseling or any qualified counseling. Apart from our focus on our commercial operations, we also work with partnerships in other geographies and with pipeline projects which are not fitting into our opioid use disorder mental health focus in the US. And there we have a history of making 
partnership with leading pharmaceutical companies, which so far have led to royalties and milestones to the company uh, ahead of $230 million. Right now, the most closest in, in line is OX640, which is epinephrine. It's uh, basically a nasal delivery of uh, uh, of, of EpiPen instead of the large EpiPen that you need to, to uh, carry around if you have severe allergy, you can then use OX640, which is then a nasal spray. On top of that, with the platform that we built both OX640, 124, 125, called Amorphox, is, is applicable on other projects. So right now we are doing partnership with two leading biomo uh, biomolecule companies who are testing Amorphox on some of their proprietary APIs. Orexo, like any other companies, of course, right now, a lot of focus is on sustainability and, and something that is, is important to Orexo and I think is important for, for the, for the uh, society is that we're working across uh, the company in, in following the UN Global Compact, which is basically a, a framework for how companies should look at being co corporate social responsible. As so we're working with how we're working with suppliers, we're working to improve access to healthcare for patients. We're of course working with the environment to bring down our environmental footprint, and also a lot with our employees to ensure we have engaged and employees who are who are. Uh, feeling well all the time and not feeling too pressed by working with Orexo. Back to our, our pipeline and our, our company. So today, our commercial products today is, is leading one is Subsol, but we also have two products, Abstral and Etlo, where Abstral have lost patent in most market, large markets, but it's still contributing fairly with royalties and Etlo is contributing royalties on a relatively low level, but continuously uh, with through the partnership with Mylan or Viatris as called today. Then we have a couple of, of supporting digital health solutions called Modia, Vovida and Deprexis. Modia is for opioid use disorder, but we also have one for alcohol management and one for depression called Deprexis. And then we have the pipeline projects that I just went through. Going into our US commercial operations, so, so our big, big focus is on opioid use disorder. Uh, and as you're probably aware of, this is an area which is causing an immense amount of lives right now. The number of people dying from opioid overdose in 2022 was ahead of 80,000 people. The majority of these people die from overdose with synthetic opioids or there are synthetic opioids mixed into their herons or to their painkillers uh, and it's predominantly fentanyl. So what we need in the market now is to ensure that we have efficient treatment for people overdosing with fentanyl and one of the reasons why we see so many people dying is that the existing alternatives in the US are not strong enough. There are more and more evidence showing that the dosing that we have in the nasal sprays uh, available today and also the injectables is not sufficient to reverse an overdose if you have fentanyl in the blood for many patients. Of course, some will get help, but if you have a high overdose, then you need something more powerful. Uh, and this is something that is guiding where we're moving right now. How can we improve access to treatment? How can we improve rescue medication? How can we ensure the people who are in treatment don't move, go back to misusing illicit drugs? And that's one of the reasons why we have this digital therapy also. So Subsolve is basically right now the foundation of the company. It is selling in the US. It's in a very competitive market with generics of the previous market leader, Suboxone Film and Suboxone Tablets. The market growth has been stalling a little after COVID. Before COVID, it was double digit. But during COVID, we have seen a, a decline. Unfortunately, some of the decline probably due to people overdosing. Uh, and some of the decline is, is simply that uh, I think we, we saw a, a decline of some of the larger clinics, which are often run by little elderly physicians who decided to retire during COVID. And the new physicians coming in have not met. Uh, have, we haven't seen the same increase to compensate for that loss. When we look at Subsol, Subsol sales have been going down a little since in US dollars since 2019 because Suboxone Film, which had, was the market leader at the time with 80% market share, uh, lost its exclusivity. And then we have seen a flood, uh, a flood of new generics coming into the market. So we lost some of the exclusive contracts we had at the time, but we still enjoy a very, very strong reimbursement with people with private health insurance or commercial access. We have 98% of people with commercial access have non-restricted access to Subsol and people with Medicaid and Medicare, we're up to nearly 50% or 47%. 
who have access to subsol reimbursed. So despite the competition with generics, we're doing pretty well. If you look at the curves to the right, you will see our EBIT margin. We've been able to sustain that despite seeing some drop in sales. Uh, part of that is, is we have some benefit from, from currency effects here. And the graph you will see here is in, in the Swedish krona. So again, divide by 10. And as the Swedish krona declined a little, some of the growth that you see in 2022 is, is more of a currency effect than demand. If we just look at demand, we have seen a, a slight decline during 2022. But now during the first half of 2023, we're actually seeing a, a very stabilizing and, and more or less exactly the same sales in the beginning of the year as where we are at the moment. Our products under the development, which is where we put our resources from the US, is going into the investment of, of new a new platform. Uh, we have this new nasal delivery technology, which I said is based on amorphous powder. Amorphous is a very, very sensitive, high energy state of, of a of uh, in, in chemistry so, so when you just expose it a little to liquid it will dissolve and release the active ingredient and what we basically do is we're putting into the powder we are packaging in the active substance into this amorphous material and when it then gets into the nose and get exposed to liquid the amorphous material will will uh, basically um, dissolves and then it will release the api and when we compare that to some of the market leading liquid products with the same dosing you can see here uh, one of the tests it's actually our ox124 when we compare to narcan so narcan is the overdose medication available today so this is a four milligram comparing four milligram uh, amorphox and four milligram uh, narcan and you can see a much much faster uptake of the amorphox platform compared to narcan uh, which of course, when you have an overdose, you want to have the effect as soon as possible. But something that is equally important is also the stability. And that is that when you expose your rescue medication for heat or for cold, you want to be sure that it works even under those conditions. So if you get it in your car during a hot summer day in Texas, or you bring it out on your ski trip in, in, uh, in northern US or in Alaska during the winter time, you want to be sure that this works and what we have seen is an independent of temperatures we have a very stable product both in terms of uh, when it's cold and when it's it's hot uh, and here's an example from one product where we have now several years of data showing basically no degradation what is quite exciting is that we've seen this data also on other a, a broad range of molecules both from smaller molecules like apomorphine but also peptides like citrullylix which is used for ivf treatment we even tested it on the spike protein as we know from covid we tested an enzyme and all of these different sizes and types of molecules we have seen very strong stability uh, and here you have the data from some of the the um, the assets but we actually now have even some monthly data on both enzymes and spike protein and we have longer for tutorialix we even have six months of data showing stability of that compound so right now we're taking our technology and testing that today together with two leading biopharmaceutical companies who have applied or what we have applied amorphox to their proprietary api and they are now testing the stability and the activity of of their biomolecules after the formulation of the product so this is super exciting and at least what we can see we haven't found any other platform for nasal delivery which have the same bioavailability combined with stability so we believe this is something that can help both biomolecules but also of course as we are developing ourselves nalmaphene naloxone epinephrine rescue medications where you want to be sure it works when you need it you want to be sure that it works fast when you need it. OX124, OX125, this is a market today with about uh, $1.1 billion in, in market sales, of where about half of it is in, in, in the US. We are expecting to file this in, in Q3 2023. And what we have designed both of these products to do is basically aiming at the synthetic opioids. So if you're overdosing with fentanyl there, or any other synthetic opioid, we know that you need something stronger than what is available and actually will be available or to see during the summer. Uh, so this has been the target for both of our product. And we've therefore, despite seeing a higher bioavailability in our OX124 formulation compared to Narcan, we decided to move to a higher dose also to be absolutely certain that if you overdose, you want something that works. 
OX640 is for an emergency treatment of allergic reactions. Uh, this is a much bigger market. Um, it's about 4 billion, or where a little more than half of it is in the US. It's projected to continue to grow. One of the issues today you have is, is that you have your EpiPen. Uh, I can actually take the next slide here, where you see the EpiPen is, is a quite sizable. You need to carry it around if you, uh, if you are highly allergic. So it, it's there when you need it. And here we have with, with EpiPen, we have um, developed a nasal delivery, which is much smaller, but even more important, I feel, is, is the stability. So we've actually shown, just as talked about before, that over time, you have much lower degradation of OX640 compared to EpiPen. The graph to the left is, is under accelerated condition. That means that we are up in, in higher temperatures with high humidity than you would normally store and should store your EpiPen. But under those conditions, you've seen there's basically no degradation of OX640. So that means that as I said before, if you forget it in the car during a hot summer day, it will work. If you have it in the winter time, it will work. And I think if you are allergic, you want to be certain that your product works when you need it. And as positive is also that it will have a much longer shelf life. So you don't need to remember to replace it as frequent as you would do with uh, the uh, injectables that are available in the market today. Uh, and one thing that is important for our entire pipeline is that we have worked to set up a sustainable supply chain using the UN Global Compact uh, principles, uh, where we have supply chain that works in place already for OX124, but it will be the same supply chain we can use for OX125 and OX640. And this supply chain is a mix of some of the the powder is developed in Europe, but all of the packaging and the quality assurance is made in Canada before it will be shipped to the US. Our financial situation at the moment is that we are in a quite transformative period at the moment for, for the company. So we have taken the profits that we're making in the US and we have invested heavily into developing our new pipeline. We also invested into digital, ther digital therapies or digital health. Uh, so our EBITDA result right now is negative, but we have guided about an EBITDA for the second half of this year to be more in balance. And the reason why we believe we will get to this is two things. So one is that we have our OX124, which have been quite costly, it always is in the last phases of development, we're now expecting to file in Q3. And the other one is we have a legal patent litigation that is ongoing, I'll come back to that shortly, which will have costed the company a lot of money. So if we extract those two, we have all the time Time been more or less in balance with EBITDA, and we now guide that we will have a balanced result in the next uh, during the last six months. And in addition, on the revenue side, we're seeing our soft start stabilizing, and we expect to see some uh, value generation out of the discussions we have on business development. So, those in combination stable sales on soft start, reduced op operating expenses, uh, new value generation partnerships we expect to lead to a balanced result in the second half. Our cash position is about $28 million. Uh, and that's again, something where we expect it to go down a little in the first half of this year, but be more balanced and maybe even positive for the second half of the year. So looking at this more graphically, if you take the Q1 of this year as an example, you see here our US, the EBITDA result in the US, and then we extract the cost we have for digital health for our pipeline and, and R&D. Uh, and then we end up at a, an R &D, an EBITDA of, of about $2 million. Then we have the clinical studies and the legal processes, and those in combination is taking us down to a negative uh, EBITDA on the company side. The one that is really costly in the legal processes is the Sun litigation, which is an IP litigation uh, where they are uh, preparing or they have 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 filed a generics uh, application on Subsolve. So we have sued them uh, and we were in court during the first quarter, which was uh, very expensive, but that's done now. And we're waiting the result within the next few weeks or maybe a month. And here's a little on the legal update. So as I said, the subsort pat the patent dispute we have with Sun Pharmaceuticals has been going on since July of, or August of 2020. 
we were in the U.S. District Court in New Jersey here in Q1. We believe that we have a very strong position. We have in total time, 10 patents listed in the Orange Book. We have the patents expires in December of, uh, of or September of 2032, majority of them. We have previously been in court for, against generic companies who are trying to launch a generic. And we have one in the U.S. Court of Appeal who basically have validated our patents on a federal level. As I said, we expect the outcome to come shortly here during the summer. Another area that I, I need to say is that also in, in July of 2020, uh, we received a subpoena from uh, the U.S. authorities and we have been collaborating with them in quite slow moving since then, uh, where they occasionally come and ask us for, for more information. So this is not moving fast, but something that we, of course, would look uh, forward to resolve. We have all the time when we have been commercializing in the U.S. been following the highest business ethical standards. It's been a co important to the company because we knew already when we, when we launched that this is an area where there's a lot of focus working in the opioid addiction space. So we were surprised to receive the subpoena and I'm happy to see that nothing has come out of this so far, which we feel is, is exposing the company. But again, there is an ongoing uh, investigation and we will need to wait and see what comes out of that. So a little summary on, on where are we right now. Uh, I believe that there are a lot of stuff happening in the company. We believe we are quite close to corporate profitability when some of our high cost drivers is, has gone and we're seeing some of the value generation we're expecting from our business development efforts, but also from, uh, from um, subsol sales stabilizing. Uh, where we see continuous work to improve access to patients. And we believe that we could have some positive uh, development during the second half of this year. In R&D, uh, we are also expecting, as I said, value generating partnerships in 2023. The, the, mo the closest in time is OX640, the epinephrine product, where we have several ongoing discussions with uh, large pharmaceutical companies. And then pharma, finally, digital health, which has been relatively slow moving. Uh, it's been a very difficult area, not only for Rexo, but also for other companies in this space, with the prime issue being reimbursement and distribution. So when you want to launch something into healthcare, you want to be sure that you can efficiently deliver to the patients and get paid by the insurance companies or from the patients or from the physicians. But this triangle where the company deliver the system we have a payer or a healthcare provider who's involved in the distribution and reimbursement process and a patient that one is not established for any digital health solutions right now and that has been a a concern and some of the solutions we have found which works uh, are quite complex to operate both from a rexa perspective and from the um, from the pay, from the, the healthcare provider perspective so this is an area where we're exploring different ways but what we have done is that we have received a grant in arizona as you know there's a 54 billions are coming in out from the opioid litigations feeding into the states where the majority of states are setting up a grant system where people can apply to have new solutions for opioid use disorder treatment we have the first one granted in arizona so we're now testing a concept we call MatCore together with a clinic in in arizona but we have additional grants filed in other states and hope that we can see them moving during the second half of this year and then finally when we have the sun ip litigation which is real an overhang on the share price at the moment uh, the results during the summer, I believe that is, is going to be a major trigger for the company if that is successful. With that, I thank you for your attention and I will now look if we have received any of the questions during the presentation. So give me a second to see the questions. Um, so what are your sales distribution channels in the US and how do you improve access to subsolve? Um, so our sales and distribution channels, we have our own field force in the US uh, that we then sell subsolve to wholesalers who sell it to the pharmacies. So we are set up as a fully operational pharmaceutical company in the US. And when it comes to improve access to subsol, we're working actively in particular in Medicaid and Medicare where we lack access today to improve access by providing strong offers and, and of course meet with the different entities in the US. And there, despite having seen this inflow of generics in 2019, we have moved from about in the low 30s percent. So I, I believe we were down at 34% of the patients in Medicaid and Medicare had access to subsol, and we're now very close to 50%. So despite the competition, we have done that quite well. 
then there's a question of whether we can reformulate subsol to renew the patent. We definitely can't because our new Amorphox platform would enable that. The question is whether we can get a reasonable price for that because already now subsol is priced quite close to the generics. So there's a business question of whether that would be motivated or if there's a need for that. Uh, but it is an, it's, it's a possibility and we could use our new platform for this. Then I have a question, can the API Astro Dreamer Sojourn be used with Amorphox? That's a very good question and I will write that down. And unfortunately, I can't answer that. Maybe I should have said that before. I Myself, I'm an economist of training, so I'm not a scientist. So I will need to go and talk to my head of R&D about this. So if you see that in our pipeline within the next year, then I will thank you, the person who's asking the question uh, for that proposal. What are your expectations when, when OX124 will be approved in the US? So we are filing it now in Q3 and the normal approval timelines is about nine to 10 months if FDA is following the normal timeline. So that will be in the middle of next year. Uh, what are the damages you're asking for Sun Pharma? So unfortunately, this is not a damage case because they haven't launched a generic. So this is a case following something called the Hacks Waxman Act in the US, where we have 30 months to resolve the, uh, the case to see whether they're infringing into the patents. And we are right now approaching the 30 month stay. So we, that's the reason why we're expecting a result in a very short timeline. But the, unfortunately, the way the system is set up in the US with IP litigations, the losing part or the winning part won't receive any compensation from the losing part. But if we win, they won't be able to launch that generic before uh, September 2032. Uh, those were the questions I have received so far. So if there's no further questions, then I wish all of you a great summer. And uh, I hope to see that we'll launch Subsolve uh, or OX124 next year in the US. And you will see some great progress in our pipeline um, with OX640 partnerships uh, and with new molecules.